America's comedians have played a serious role in this election. One comedian, New Jersey native Dean Obadala, works to get a laugh while making a point on his radio show, in comedy clubs, and through his writing. As an American Muslim, this election year has given rise to a more urgent message. My name is Dean Obadala, and I want to be your Muslim friend. And that's how I start my radio show every day. He's a Muslim. He's a writer. He's a comedian. And hello, friends. As always, I'm here to be your Muslim friend. Um, though I do get Twitter tweets and emails from people. I never met a Muslim before, and you're my Muslim friend, first person I know who's Muslim. That's so much the issue. I've also seen him turn on comedians in the past. Oh, definitely. I mean, he not only angrily tweeted about people like Seth Meyers from the White House Correspondents' right. Dinner, he sued Bill Maher for $5 million over a joke Bill Maher told on The Tonight Show about him in 2013. He withdrew the loose later. Donald Trump is waging a war on comedy, and we cannot let him win that war. That is too important in this country. We can't lose comedy. We can't lose comedy. No. You're an immigrant. You came from the Netherlands. Absolutely. This country. You were born in another country. Your family came here because America represented something special, a place where all different races and religions could come and be treated equally. Your family probably would not even come to this country if Donald Trump was running for president and they heard that kind of rhetoric. Because as an immigrant family, you're like, I'm not sure if we're welcome that nation. That's what Donald... He offends the promise that my father, my grandparents came to this country for and every immigrant out there. You're an immigrant, too. I, I know you're not defending his hate. You're not like that. I no. get it. But at some point, you have to say, I cannot defend this man any longer now. All right, compared to President Obama, who I think is the modern-day best comedic president ever, even in person. I had the honor of meeting President Obama last year, and I said, you have great comedic timing. And he paused, and he goes, I know. <laughs> so Trump did so bad at the end, Colonel Dolan gave his campaign last rights. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Folks, I'll be here all week. No. But, but First of all, there are men wearing speedos that we should cover up. They should be forced <laughs> to wear a bikini. Some people should be forced yeah. to wear a bikini. The good thing is, yesterday, the court, one of the administrative courts in France struck down the, the ban. But it was a ridiculous ban. There are men, not me, but there are men who want to control women. They could be Christian, Jewish, or Muslim. It doesn't matter. They want to tell women what they have to wear. In Saudi and Arabia and Iran, where they say women have to cover up, and I'm Muslim, that's wrong. It's un-Islamic. It's bad. When you, the flip side is when you tell women you have to undress to come on our beach, right. that's just as wrong. We've talked about the anti-Semitism and the white supremacy of Breitbart and Steve Bannon, and that's rightful, and we should talk about it. We have not talked about Breitbart under Bannon has become the home for anti-Muslim bigotry, giving columns for Pam Geller, the worst anti-Muslim, Frank Gaffney, uh, Gertz Wilder, a Dutch member of parliament who hates Muslims, writing things like ban all Muslims, we're a threat to Judeo-Christian values. He said, we demand, we demand that you give disenfranchised communities a chance. I love Chappelle's jokes in there. He's showing Donald Trump will make America laugh again, which is the upside of a Trump presidency. And I think that you're going to see Donald Trump be great for comedians. And my fellow progressives who are freaking out, comedy is cathartic. Let's laugh at it. Let's have some fun. It's empowering. Dave Chappelle's right. Donald Trump wants to reach out. Wants an open mind from us? He's got to reach out to us. Come out to our communities. Meet with our leaders. Apologize for the hate he spewed. Get rid of Steve Bannon. Number one, get rid of Steve Bannon. And then maybe we can work on things together.